Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News with the last chance qualifying not too far away and the Ascension playoffs continuing. Lots of stories over the last few days as to how good Sentinels are looking behind the scenes. Boost yo for me, Volgenius is. Recent grand finalist, let's not forget at Masters Toko, got pretty much destroyed last night by Sentinels in a set of scrims and he reckons they're looking very scary. So much so, they're going to win the LCQ and then they're going to win champions. Very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. So yesterday we talked about this whole drama between Shazam and Aimbot's Neon and actually last night Shazam was on stream playing in like a sponsored segment with Aimlab. So pretty funny really how um, after all that drama, if you guys didn't see it, this guy Aimbot, Neon and Shazam had a bit of a back and forth. We talked about it in yesterday's video and the classic quote was, see you in Dallas buddy. And Shazam was like, I don't know what that means, but apparently Shazam's going to be there because as he says, I had to do a sponsored segment for the event because I'm being paid paid to attend. So it seems like he does know what, um, you know, what see you in Dallas buddy means because there's this event in Dallas. It's like an aim labs event. You shoot the dots, you know, and the winner, I guess, gets a prize or something. But Shazam is apparently going to be there. And I'm really looking forward to this now because we saw aimbot neon say that all pro players would get destroyed by these aim warriors. And, um, you know, hopefully they do. I I'd be entertained to see it. But Shazam apparently is going to be there. Can you imagine a 1v1 like on LAN or whatever on aim labs? between Shazam and this Aimbot Neo guy. Could be really entertaining. So it seems like Shazam does know what's going on and he's, uh, what, being paid to attend, he says straight up. So that's end of July in Dallas, Texas. Very exciting stuff. Also to mention for you guys, the Chinese qualify for champions. In the next couple of days, we are going to get some teams that are officially qualified there. We know many of the champions teams from all around the different regions that qualified based on the playoffs in region a while ago now and then locked in those spots by good performances at the Mar Masters Tokyo events. But in China, there's no guaranteed teams. Every roster has to go through the qualification process, get themselves top three in the tournament, and then they'll make it through. Kang Kang and Co on Edward Gaming are not far away. And uh, there were a few clips emerging last night to boast it was like, yeah, getting PTSD from what he was doing to me in scrims. This is a pretty funny one here, right, where he's just having such an easy time. I can't believe he plays with his monitor at this angle. I've never seen anything like this. I know that's okay. I've probably seen some players that have done this before, but that's pretty wild to me like I'm not doing that but fair play so I mean yeah he's obviously finding it so easy that he just leads back here nice and relaxed from Kang Kang and there were plenty of clips from last night about he was just having a good time to be honest I mean I'll just go full zoom here this guy is just so crisp on the jet man I mean the operator and then just the jet knives as well it's such a great PV to watch we don't forget that he had the highest ACS in the tournament at Masters Toko despite Edward Gaming falling short top six I believe in the end so Edward Gaming there were a lot of upsets actually it's got to be said in this Chinese LCQ or this, this Chinese qualifier because no one else has qualified so far. So I guess really it's not technically the LCQ. And these clips playing in the background here are not Kang Kang's clips. These are from Huzi. I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it. From a different roster that we'll have a look at how they're getting on in a second. So it's interesting. You look at this POV, you think, damn, this is probably Kang Kang, but it's actually not, which uh, makes you pretty excited about the future of Chinese Valorant and some of the entertaining players that we are seeing come out of that region. So Edward Gaming, they did get the job done. 2 versus Weibo Gaming yesterday pretty clean 13-6 fracture 13-7 on binds and Kang Kang you know 44 and 30 good series and the rest of the guys they are looking poised to advance and this is how things are going right so that player that we just noticed is on Billy Billy Gaming and they beat Monarch Effect the question you know the team that was in the drama the other day they're going down to losers to play attacking Soul Esports also Fun Plus Phoenix are down here so lots of big upsets Edward Gaming have avoided all of that but still one of Edward and Tai Lu will qualify this is a best of five matchup and then we also get tomorrow Trace Esports versus Billy Billy Gaming and one of those teams in that best of five will also qualify for champions so definitely some surprises emerging here so far and the two teams in the upper finals will make it and then also from losers round three onwards three teams make champions basically Edward definitely favorites to do so but still Tyler looking good so far as well haven't dropped a map in the tournament so far from their run wanted to mention this quickly as well I thought an interesting tweet here from Valor Intel discussing Vanity had a bit of an interview with him an exclusive talking about the cloud nine situation and yay and says that looking back I wish we'd have leaned into our strengths but I think nobody really knew what the meta was going to be at the time and we played what we thought worked for us at the time so it was interesting right the whole cloud nine stuff because when these guys 
players were benched. All the talk was that it was for monetary financial reasons. And I still think that there's probably a high likelihood that it was. But the replacements worked better than these guys were initially. And therefore, it looks like, you know, like Cardano made a great decision. Now, are they the favourites for the last chance qualifier? That is one of the big questions at the moment because they have been looking very good. But they just about fell short of qualifying for Masters Tokyo. And the pressure is now on them. Because Cloud9 being really the favourites for the LCQ on their performances will have the pressure on them. The teams will be looking at what they've been doing. Can they maintain the great level they had during the regular season? Difficult to say. We'll talk about Sentinels and how they could challenge in a second. But also I did want to mention a little bit more detail on the M80 situation because they will play at 9Z tomorrow and then they play the Union straight away. And I do wonder what you guys think. I know I mentioned this last night, but there's been some further discussion on it because in some esports, like in the Call of Duty world, this would probably be considered an advantage for the team and losers round two. So if you guys are unfamiliar, instead of playing this game today or even yesterday, they've had two free days off at the Ascension playoffs, but yet they're going to play these games back to back. And in the Call of Duty world, it would probably be considered an advantage for the team that wins losers round two because of momentum. But in other tactical FPSs, such as this one in Valorant, and the amount of, you know, it's a bit of a slower pace. It takes longer for the series to occur sometimes if they do go all the way to a best of three. Down to the wire, that actually having the extra rest is probably, like I would say in this case, it's probably beneficial to the union. They get to prepare themselves a little bit better. But um, yeah, definitely a surprising format given that there's two days off with nothing happening in Sao Paulo for this tournament and then they're going to play two very important games the most important games of the entire season for these respective teams back to back feels like they might have made a bit of an error on this one to be honest but still Nismo and Coat they're looking to make the run and the winner of all of those matches will play the guard in the grand finals on Sunday let's talk Sentinels because they are looking apparently really good right now behind the scenes we saw the other day Kaplan said and the entire team implies that they have been putting in a lot of work and even more work than other teams he basically said that a lot of the other teams in the lcq haven't started practicing until kind of recently and sentinels have been putting in the work they their intention this year rob moore said before the year began they nailed it in terms of winning things in 2021 they nailed it in terms of content in 2022 but 2023 they wanted to do both they missed the mark on the winning so far and the content's definitely been still good. I mean, it's Sentinels at the end of the day. But they're looking to take the next level, right? They've made some changes there internally. Kaplan comes in. And apparently, they're looking really good. This comes out of Boostio from Evil Geniuses last night. Bro, Sentinels is winning champs. Good luck, 100 Thieves. Says that like 100 Thieves have no chance, basically, in the first round that they play. And that Sentinels is going to go all the way to win the LCQ and then Champions. Now, this is like a common meme that happens every year, right? You play a team in scrims before a big tournament. And you say, oh, well these guys you know gonna win everything type thing to jinx them a little bit but also just to imply that they just had your number in practice today and that's pretty impressive these were the numbers in question actually we saw this on stewie 2k stream i believe last night of you know sentinels okay we've got marv we've got tens we've got demon one ethan boost your com on the other side your gemo down at six to fourteen so they play all the way so they don't go to 13 rounds they go all the way to the 24 rounds they play the full 24 round segment and we've only got 20 20 rounds in play so far. So this could have ended 14-10, could have ended 18-6 to Sentinels. We don't know what map it was on, but still, this is impressive from Sentinels. It's just practice. And if any of you guys watch my Call of Duty channel as well, you'll know full well that in recent days, there's been quite a lot of talk. The fact that Optic Texas last season in Call of Duty World won like 40 maps in a row probably some hyperbole there from Octane, but they won a lot of maps in a row online against a specific team. But during the same time frame, they lost like every time that they played on LAN in an actual proper game. So practice and these type of numbers and results really don't mean that much. But, um, you know, they still mean something, right? The best teams generally are the best teams in practice as well. That's how things usually go. And let's not forget that Evil Geniuses just made the finals at Masters Tokyo. This is a very good team. The best in the American region right now hands down on the recent evidence that we have so it's not like these are some slouches that eg used to have like these guys are really good at the moment they i mean okay they didn't beat Fnatic. they didn't get particularly close to beating Fnatic, but they did the first time around right the winners finals eg came pretty close to beating Fnatic themselves grand finals the vetoes came through and eg really never stood a chance in that one but second best team in the world you know whatever you guys want to consider it as they're very good and sentinels just put up some wilt chamberlain 
in numbers against apparently in scrims last night. Zekin's like, oh yeah, we still need to start practicing and all this. But um, yeah, they're looking good. And even Demon1 comes through and does his analysis on this. He still has Cloud9 getting the job done here, but he does have Sintels going all the way to the finals. So this seems to be the perception that those are the two teams to favor right now. Cloud9, you probably can't look past them. They've probably been looking good in practice as well. But also they were really the best performing team of the regular season. But then he's got Sintels making the run all the way to the finals. So in tweeting your thoughts on this, because definitely Sintels beating 100 Thieves seems to be the consensus at the moment. Of course, it's never you know locked in until the game actually happens in a few days time. And then even if Cloud9 were to beat Sentinels, he's got them beating Leviathan and Fury and then rematching again with Cloud9 getting the job done. In his opinion, and this of course could very well be true, but only one team from the LCQ goes through to champions, right? It could have been if EG had a beaten Fnatic in the finals, it would have been both of the grand finalists go through from the Americas because one more spot gets opened up. So very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Do wonder real quick because yeah, the LCQ is coming up in a week or so's time. Ethan says, look, get Pro City back going again like we had before. Unfortunately, probably not going to happen immediately because the players are practicing for the LCQ as we just saw. So probably nothing happening there, but still within due course, hopefully this can be the case again, that Pro City starts up again. Also do wonder whether we're going to have some more organization dropouts. We've seen some, like as soon as the Challenger circuit ended, we saw some organizations call it a day. I wouldn't be surprised if we see more over the coming days and weeks here, really. Zekin might be preparing for something like that to happen as well, but we'll see how things go. Very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.